About a year and a half ago, my wife and I bought an old Victorian house on a corner lot, along with two more open lots to the west of it. So there's about 100 feet of yard on the west side of our house that goes almost to the neighbor's driveway. It's a half acre. We've been renovating the house mostly on our own and currently live three blocks away. The neighbor's yard is very small. Not long after buying it, I noticed the neighbor's kids and grandkids using almost the entire space as they pleased. One of the older kids in his 20s would regularly hit golf balls in our yard, tearing up the grass. They played football and soccer in our yard. One day, the adults played cornhole in our yard, and afterward, I noticed cigarette butts all over the ground. I'm all for kids being outside and touching grass, but if they need an open space to play in, there's a park a block away. This clearly didn't start when we bought the place. Based on the condition the house was in when we purchased it, the previous tenants, who were renters, didn't care enough to take care of the inside of the house to mind all that much what was happening on the outside, so the neighbors took advantage. After the cornhole incident, I decided to have a talk with the neighbors and tried to be as nice as possible in seeing where they thought the property line was. We both thought it was about three feet from their driveway on the other side of where they have several planters and store their trash cans. I thought maybe they would realize I wasn't okay with them using my yard as they pleased and would respect that. This was about six months ago. They backed off a little bit, but are still using a good 10 feet plus of my yard and even mowing that area. The renovations are almost finished, and we are at a point where we are ready to move in. I remembered I had a buddy who used to do survey work and asked him about finding property pins. I wanted to find them if they were there, so I could be 100% sure I knew where the line was. He came over today to find them. They are even further over than I thought. About two feet further, which means all of the things they have on the side of their driveway are mostly in my yard, including a large bush I thought was entirely theirs. I eventually want to build a fence, but it's not in the budget at the moment. I painted some lines where the pins are so they could see them, but they are for sure not gonna move anything off my property without me at least asking them to. And even then, I expect to encounter some resistance. How do I go about this? I don't wanna be in jerk, but they're occupying the property I pay for and honestly don't wanna share. I feel like they should have respected that from the first time I spoke with them, but they obviously don't. And the fact that I learned today their stuff is in my yard further complicates it. Now for a few comments before the update. Comment one. To be honest, I wouldn't make a big deal of it until a few weeks before the fence goes in. Then start telling them that they need to move their stuff off because the fence is going to be put up in X number of days. Really just to reduce the amount of friction and the amount of time they have to act nasty. Once the fence is up, the problem is solved. Comment two. Not the jerk. I'd prioritize getting that fence up sooner rather than later. Juggle some other stuff around if you have to. Either way, tell them that you plan to put a fence up soon and are gathering estimates. Point out exactly where the fence will go and let them know they need to move their stuff. Edit typos. Now for the update, thanks for all the comments from the last post. So after finding out that the property line was even further over than I thought, I decided to talk to the neighbors again. I figured it was best to get it out in the open and try to resolve things amicably. I went over there one evening and knocked on their door. The dad answered, and I explained the situation, showing him the painted lines and the property pins my buddy had found. He seemed surprised, but not entirely shocked. He said he'd talk to his family about it and get back to me. A few days went by, and I didn't hear anything. Meanwhile, we were busy with the final touches on the house. We were installing new kitchen cabinets and painting the living room. One afternoon, while I was taking a break, I noticed the neighbor's kids playing soccer again, right up to the painted lines. I decided to let it slide for now, thinking maybe they hadn't had the chance to talk about it yet. Then, one Saturday morning, I woke up to the sound of a lawnmower. I looked out the window and saw the neighbor mowing the strip of grass that was clearly on my side of the line. I went outside and waved him down, I asked him if he had talked to his family about the property line. He said he had, but they didn't think it was a big deal since they'd been using the space for years. I tried to explain that it was a big deal to me, but he just shrugged and kept mowing. That's when I made a mistake. I was frustrated and tired from all the renovations and I snapped. I told him that if they didn't stop using my yard, I'd have to take legal action. His face changed and he got defensive. He said they'd been good neighbors and didn't deserve to be threatened. 
I realized I'd gone too far, but the damage was done. He turned off the mower and walked back to his house without another word. The next day, I noticed they had moved their trash cans and planters off my property, but the large bush was still there. I decided to give it some time and focus on moving into the house. We finally moved in the following weekend. It was a relief to be in our new home, but the tension with the neighbors was obvious. A week later, I came home from work to find a letter in my mailbox. It was from a lawyer representing the neighbors. They were claiming that they had a right to use the property because they had been doing so for years and they were prepared to take it to court. I couldn't believe it. I had only wanted them to respect the property line and now it was turning into a legal battle. I talked to my wife about it and we decided to consult a lawyer ourselves. Our lawyer explained that the neighbors might be trying to claim adverse possession, which meant they could potentially gain legal rights to the property if they had been using it openly and continuously for a certain number of years. This was a nightmare scenario. We had just moved in and now we were facing a legal dispute. As we prepared for the possibility of going to court, I started to think about the history of the house and the neighborhood. I remembered talking to the previous tenants when we first bought the house. They had mentioned that the neighbors were friendly and helpful, but they never said anything about them using the yard. I decided to reach out to them and see if they had any information that could help us. I managed to track down one of the previous tenants, and we met for coffee. She told me that the neighbors had always used the yard even when they lived there. She said they didn't mind because they didn't use the space much themselves. She also mentioned that the neighbors had been living there for over 20 years and had always been good to them. This information was both helpful and disheartening. It meant the neighbors had a strong case for adverse possession. As we gathered evidence and prepared for the legal battle, I couldn't help but feel a mix of emotions. I was angry at myself for snapping and escalating the situation. I was frustrated with the neighbors for not respecting the property line. And I was worried about the outcome of the case. My wife and I had put so much time and effort into renovating the house, and now we were facing the possibility of losing part of our yard. One evening, as I was going through some old documents related to the house, I found a letter from the original owners. It was a welcome letter congratulating us on buying the house and offering some tips on maintaining the property. At the bottom of the letter, there was a handwritten note. It said, The neighbors have always been good to us. They helped us with the garden and watched over the house when we were away. We hope you'll get along with them as well as we did. Reading that note made me realize that the neighbors weren't just trying to take advantage of us. They had a long history with the property and felt a sense of ownership over the space. I decided to try one more time to resolve things peacefully. I wrote a letter to the neighbors, apologizing for my earlier outburst and explaining that I didn't want to go to court. I asked if we could sit down and talk things through. A few days later, the dad came over and knocked on my door. He said he appreciated the letter and agreed to talk. We sat down at the kitchen table and discussed the situation. He explained that they had always used the yard because the previous tenants didn't mind, and they didn't realize it would be an issue for us. I told him that I understood their perspective, but that we wanted to use the space ourselves. We eventually came to a compromise. They agreed to move the large bush and stop using the yard for their activities. In return, we agreed to let them keep their planters and trash cans on the edge of the property until we could afford to build a fence. It wasn't a perfect solution, but it was a start. As we shook hands and agreed to move forward, I felt a sense of relief. The legal battle was averted, and we could focus on settling into our new home. It wasn't the outcome I had initially hoped for, but it was a step in the right direction. Thanks for reading. Am I the idiot for telling my wife I'm meeting my son with or without her permission? When I, male 36, was 14, my then-girlfriend, who was 17 at the time, gave birth to our son. Our parents forced us to give him up for adoption. Over the years, I've always thought about him and often felt sad that I wasn't allowed to keep him. I always had hope that I would be able to meet him one day, and I even took a DNA test a couple of years ago in hopes that he would do the same one day, and he did. I recently received a notification of a potential match, and I couldn't even describe how happy I was. I instantly showed my wife, who seemed happy for me too. I learned a lot about my son, including the fact that he didn't have as great of a childhood as I'd hoped, which genuinely hurt. 
After chatting for a couple of days, he asked if we could meet in person. I had already been contemplating asking him the same thing, so I instantly agreed. When I shared this with my wife, she didn't seem too happy. I told her that I was thinking about meeting him halfway, but my wife told me that she didn't like that idea because she didn't want to be left alone with our kids, 11-year-old boy and 9-year-old girl. I suggested that we could all go together and make it a family trip instead, but she told me that she didn't want the kids around him because in her eyes he's still a stranger, and she wants to wait until we all knew him better. I told her that even if we all went, she and the kids didn't need to be present during the meeting and can spend the time I'm not with them doing something fun together, but she was still hesitant. After a while, she just told me to drop it until she's ready, because she's not comfortable with me meeting him at the moment and wanted me to wait until she was. This honestly pissed me off because I felt like she was being unreasonable. I told her that she knows her mom would have no problem staying with her for a couple of days while I went to go and meet him. I asked her to ask her mom if she'd be open to, and she refused. I told my wife that I feel like she's intentionally trying to stop me from meeting my son, which is upsetting. Earlier today, I told my wife that I was planning on meeting my son with or without her permission if she continues to refuse. My wife was hurt that I said that and told me that she feels like I don't understand her concerns. I told her that I tried hard to understand and offered multiple solutions, and all she did was complain about every single one. She's now mad and has been very cold towards me. She told me she feels as if I'm not valuing her input, which I feel as if I tried. She's not ready to have him in our life yet, but I don't see why I can't have him in mine. She's not the one meeting him. Now for a few comments before the update. Comment one, not the idiot. She didn't want to be left alone with our kids, 11-year-old male and nine-year-old female. This isn't the point of the post, but are kids this age difficult for one person to care for? Or was this an excuse to get you to not go? Not a parent, and it's been a long time since I was that age, so genuinely wondering. Comment two. I think your wife's fear is that you will prioritize him over her children, or she doesn't want to accept a child that is not hers. You need to sit down with her and ask her to be truthful with you about her fears. Now, for the update. Hey everyone, thanks for reading my last post. So after that argument with my wife, things were pretty tense around the house. We barely spoke to each other for the rest of the day, and when we did, it was just about the kids or other mundane stuff. I could tell she was still upset, but I was determined to meet my son. I decided to give her some space and not bring it up again for a while. The next day, I got a message from my son. He was really excited about meeting up and suggested a date and place. I felt a mix of excitement and anxiety. I knew I had to tell my wife, but I wasn't sure how she'd react. I decided to wait until the kids were in bed before bringing it up. That evening, after the kids were asleep, I sat down with my wife and told her about the message. She looked at me with a mixture of sadness and frustration. She said she still wasn't comfortable with the idea and felt like I was rushing things. I tried to explain that this was important to me and that I needed to do this for myself and for our son. She sighed and said she needed more time to process everything. The next day, I decided to call my mother-in-law and explain the situation to her. I asked if she could stay with my wife and the kids for a couple of days while I went to meet my son. She was very understanding and agreed to help out. I felt a bit relieved, but I knew I still had to convince my wife. When I told my wife about her mom's offer, she seemed a bit more open to the idea. She said she appreciated her mom's support, but still had concerns about me meeting our son without knowing more about him. I told her that I understood her worries, but I needed to take this step. She reluctantly agreed, but I could tell she was still uneasy. The day of the meeting finally arrived. I was a bundle of nerves as I drove to the halfway point. When I got there, I saw my son waiting for me. He looked so much like me when I was his age. We hugged, and it felt like a huge weight had been lifted off my shoulders. We spent the day talking, getting to know each other, and sharing stories. It was an emotional and overwhelming experience but it was also incredibly rewarding. During our conversation, my son opened up about his childhood and the struggles he faced. He told me about the difficulties he had with his adoptive parents and how he often felt like he didn't belong. Hearing this broke my heart and I felt a deep sense of guilt for not being there for him. But he also told me about the good times and the people who supported him along the way. 
It was a lot to take in, but it made me even more determined to be a part of his life. When I got home, my wife was waiting for me. She asked how the meeting went, and I could see the concern in her eyes. I told her everything, from the emotional reunion to the stories my son shared. She listened quietly, and I could see her starting to understand why this was so important to me. Over the next few days, my wife and I had several long conversations about our son and what this meant for our family. She admitted that she was scared of how this would affect our kids and our relationship. I reassured her that I was committed to making this work and that I wanted her and the kids to be a part of this journey with me. We also talked about our own childhoods and how they shaped our views on family and parenting. My wife shared some painful memories of her own, which helped me understand her perspective better. It was a difficult but necessary conversation, and it brought us closer together. As we continued to navigate this new chapter in our lives, I noticed a change in my wife. She started to warm up to the idea of meeting our son and even suggested that we all go on a family trip to visit him. It was a huge step, and I was grateful for her willingness to try. In the meantime, my son and I continued to stay in touch. We talked regularly, and I could see him slowly opening up and trusting me more. It was a slow process, but I was committed to being there for him. One evening, my wife and I were sitting on the couch talking about our plans for the future. She told me that she was proud of me for taking the initiative to meet our son, and that she was starting to see the importance of having him in our lives. It was a moment of clarity for both of us, and it felt like we were finally on the same page. As we move forward, I know there will be challenges and difficult moments, but I'm confident that we can face them together as a family. I'm grateful for the support of my wife and mother-in-law, and I'm excited to see what the future holds for all of us. Thanks for reading. Am I the idiot for refusing to go on a family vacation with my hypocritical half-brothers who suddenly decided to play nice? My mom has two older kids, 24-year-old male and 23-year-old male. We don't have the same father. Growing up, they always made it known that they didn't like me and that I wasn't their brother. I was always hurt by it, but after a while, I just stopped caring. They were never nice to me. And as they got older, they kind of stopped visiting my mom. When they would visit, they'd ignore me. Once my mom gave birth to my little brother, one-year-old male, they started visiting more, and their relationship with my mom and stepdad improved. Seeing them interact and play with my brother always made me upset because they are always gentle and caring when it comes to him, but were always so hateful towards me. It's not that I want my brother to be mistreated. It's just that I wish they were like that with me as well. I have nothing but hate for them and my mom knows this. The thing is, my mom wants to go on a family vacation in July. July is when she has her birthday and she wants to spend it with her family. I didn't realize this meant her older kids would come as well this time. We went on two vacations before my brother was born and her older kids never came. This would be the first trip we would have with my brother. And since she's close with her kids now, she thinks it's good for them to come. I don't agree. I mean, I don't care if they come, but I don't wanna go if they're going. My mom's husband backed me up at first because they weren't nice to him either. But when my mom became upset, he kind of changed his mind and started backing her up, asking me to reconsider. I again told them no. My mom told me that she wants all of her kids to come along, but I told her that I wasn't going on a trip with people who literally made me miserable growing up. She told me that she can ask them to apologize for how they treated me, but in my eyes, no apology would ever be good enough, especially if it's forced. My mom knows how they treated me growing up, and knowing that she still wants me to go with makes me upset. Mom has been crying, and my stepdad has been asking me to reconsider for my mom's sake. He told me that he doesn't want them to come either, but he's doing it so my mom can be happy. I want my mom to be happy too, but I don't see why I have to go. To add, I did not make this account to ask if I'm a jerk for not forgiving them or even hating them. My opinion is not gonna change. Don't bother with that. I made this account to ask if I'm a jerk for not wanting to go on a family vacation. Now for a few comments before the update. Comment one, not the idiot. Your mom allowed them to mistreat you for years and not having all her children together for events is the price she's paying for that. I'd flat out tell her that going on a trip with people who made your entire life miserable and the woman who allowed and enabled that mistreatment is something you will never do. 
that if she wanted a united, happy family, she should have fostered that unity a long time ago, and it's too little too late now. She needs to hear that she is responsible for the rift in her family and actually own up to it. Comment 2. Not the idiot at all. If your mom wanted all her kids together, she should have told them to cut the crap and put them in therapy, but she chose not to. So she can't force you to be around them. Your stepdad needs to stick to his original point of not coming along either. Your mother brought this on herself. She only has herself to blame. Now for the update, hey everyone, thanks for reading. So a lot has happened in the past three days. First off, my mom's been trying really hard to get me to change my mind about the vacation. She even sat me down and tried to have a heart-to-heart -heart talk. She said she understands why I feel the way I do, but she really wants all of us to be together for her birthday. I told her again that I don't want to go if my older brothers are going. She started crying again and it made me feel terrible, but I just can't get past how they treated me. Then my stepdad pulled me aside. He said he knows it's a tough situation, but he thinks I should go for my mom's sake. He said he doesn't want to go either, but he's doing it to make her happy. He asked me to think about how much it would mean to her if we were all there. I told him I understood, but I still didn't want to go. He looked disappointed, but didn't push it further. Later that day, my older brothers showed up at the house. I was in my room when I heard them talking to my mom in the living room. They were laughing and playing with my little brother, and it made me feel so angry. I couldn't stand hearing them having a good time while I was stuck in my room, feeling miserable. I decided to go out and confront them. When I walked into the living room, the atmosphere changed immediately. My mom looked nervous, and my brothers just stared at me. I told them that I didn't want to go on the vacation with them because of how they treated me growing up. They looked surprised, and one of them actually apologized. He said he was sorry for how they treated me and that they were just kids back then. The other one nodded and said he felt the same way, but their apologies felt empty to me. I told them that their words didn't change anything and that I still didn't want to go. My mom started crying again and my stepdad tried to calm her down. My brothers looked uncomfortable and didn't say anything else. I went back to my room, feeling even more upset than before. I knew my mom was hurt, but I couldn't just pretend everything was okay. The next day, my mom came to my room and said she had an idea. She suggested that we go on the vacation but stay in separate rooms. That way, I wouldn't have to interact with my brothers if I didn't want to. She said it would mean a lot to her if I at least tried. I thought about it for a while and finally agreed. I figured it was a compromise that might make things a little easier. But things took a turn when my older brothers found out about the separate rooms. They were offended and said it made them feel like they weren't really part of the family. They said if we were going to be separated like that, they might as well not go at all. My mom got really upset and started crying again. She said she just wanted everyone to be together and happy. At this point, I felt like I was stuck in a tough situation. I didn't want to hurt my mom, but I also didn't want to spend a week with people who made my life miserable. I decided to talk to my stepdad again. He said he understood how I felt, but that sometimes we have to do things we don't want to do for the people we love. He said he was willing to go on the vacation even though he didn't want to, just to make my mom happy. He asked me to think about it one more time. That night, I couldn't sleep. I kept thinking about everything that had happened and how much my mom wanted us all to be together. I thought about how my stepdad was willing to put his feelings aside for her. I realized that maybe I needed to do the same. It wasn't an easy decision, but I decided to go on the vacation for my mom's sake. The next morning, I told my mom that I would go. She was so happy and hugged me, thanking me over and over. My stepdad looked relieved and even my older brothers seemed a little more relaxed. I still didn't feel great about it, but I knew it was the right thing to do for my mom. As we started planning the trip, I tried to focus on the positive aspects. I thought about how much my little brother would enjoy the vacation and how happy my mom would be to have us all together. I knew it wouldn't be easy, but I was determined to make the best of it. In the days leading up to the trip, I spent a lot of time thinking about my relationship with my older brothers. I realized that a part of me still wanted their approval, even though I hated them for how they treated me. I thought about the times when I was younger and how much I wanted to be included in their games and activities. I wondered if things could ever be different between us. I also thought about my mom and how much she had been through. She had always tried to keep the family together, 
even when things were tough. I realized that this vacation was her way of trying to heal old wounds and bring us closer. I decided that I would try to be open to the possibility of things getting better, even if it was just a small step. So, that's where things stand now. We're getting ready for the vacation, and I'm trying to keep an open mind. I don't know what will happen, but I'm willing to give it a shot for my mom's sake. Thanks for reading. If you liked this video, you'll probably like these too. Also, while you're here, please consider subscribing. It's your support that keeps this channel alive and allows me to make better and longer videos. Have a great day.